Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like a thing. Make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. And welcome back to another episode of Instagram versus reality. This is where I take my life as an influencer, merge it with my degree in editorial advertising photography, and talk about some stuff. We talk about how filters and digital manipulation is being used to trick us on a daily basis, sell us products that don't actually work, Work, as well as just make us all feel like shit, basically. As always with these videos, I want to remind you that I'm not calling out people who use filters or trying to shame everyone. Everyone is, of course, free to do whatever they want. I use filters. I'll use an Instagram filter sometimes. I color correct my videos. You know, all these things can be considered digital manipulation. I'm just here to remind people to question what we see online, especially when it comes to comparing our own bodies and our own self-worth to that of influencers or celebrities. Now, I hate to say this because with these names I'm about to say comes an onslaught of insults in the comments section, not aimed at me, but aimed at this family in particular. But we do have a bit of a Kardashian and Jenna special today for no other reason other than they've been up to a lot since I last filmed an Instagram versus reality video. The reason I struggle with talking about the Kardashians and the, the Jenners is as much as people like to bad mouth this family, especially when it comes to their use of filters and digital manipulation, befores and afters, comparisons, you know, all that kind of stuff. I feel like there's so much we can learn from this family as modern day celebrities, as influencers, as females in the public eye. They've set a lot of modern day beauty standards. They set a lot of modern day trends. They're victims of their own beauty standards and trends. And when you browse through the comments, I'm looking at some now, the hate comments are very, very typical of the hate comments you would see thrown at any female in the public eye. And I feel like this is something that all females or female presenting people face online is the expectation to be pretty, but not too pretty, naturally pretty, not too done up, but not too underdone, not wearing too much makeup, but wearing enough you know, to make you followable. <laughs> not being too skinny, not being too big. As, as a female online, you just cannot win. And I feel like when you look at everything that the Kardashians get involved with when it comes to the hate comments, the trolls, the filters, it's just a representation, a, a very accurate representation. Microcosm, I think the word is, of what it is to be a female online today. Obviously, as I personally begin to learn more about this family, I'm more towards the neutral side. Like, I don't really care what they're up to. I am seeing more cases of cultural appropriation on their behalf as I look through more pictures and videos. Um, what else strikes me about this family is how much Facetune, as I mentioned before, is a part of their brand. It's almost like by default, we expect to see them super retouched and we don't expect anything else, which leads to a situation where they're called out for over Facetuning, but then they're also called out for pop to the shop and getting some milk and not having makeup on, you know? Again, this is not just limited to this family. You see these comparisons with any female online who is in the public eye. So yes, a gentle reminder that in this video we are talking about the use of filters and retouching what is possible and what isn't. This isn't a video about their personalities, whether I like or enjoy their lifestyle or the character traits of the Kardashians and Jenners. That can be a whole other topic which we don't need to get into today. So let's take a look at the speech made by Khloe Kardashian. She won a People's Choice Award. I think it was like best reality star for keeping up with the Kardashians. So I'm just gonna play it next to me here and we can very, very clearly see that there is a filter being used. It's painfully obvious, in fact. Of course, she's obviously had some work done. Fillers, I would guess, not a bad thing. I get filler in my nose. I think we need to get over this idea of shaming people for getting tweaks done to their body. Would it be different if she was saying a lip plumper? Yes. <laughs> now this is quite tough to tell exactly what's going on because the video quality has been shot down a lot for a few reasons. Um, this usually happens when you use face changing filters like live filters um, through these apps. And of course, websites like Twitter are gonna bring that quality right down. The thing is with this, there's no obvious signs of background moving or hair wrapping under her chin, which is usually a sign that a lot of changes have been made. I feel like it's tiny tweaks that have been made here. A little bit like face slimming, nose slimming for sure. Um, her eyes are definitely more enhanced. Yes, her nose is looking pinched as well. And there's an obvious, painfully obvious lack of texture on her skin. So there's some skin filters going on here too. We can also compare this video to a video she posted a little bit later, where she's in the same outfit. The filter seems to be off or just a lot less obvious. There's obviously still some kind of skin filter here, but her nose looks very different. Her chin is a lot less pointy. And of course, the vast majority of the comments around this video 
were very wise to this. The people were like, stop using this filters, Chloe. Like, we all know what you look like. Who is this person? You look very, very different. What I want to consider here is from what I do know about this family, I want people to think about, I'm not excusing using filters. I want people to think, what does being called fat do to someone? Very publicly on a daily basis. What does years of being called the ugly sister do to someone? And what does years of people nonstop commenting on what the way your body should be do to someone? Then also on the same side of that, what does years of observing this do to a teenage girl? lady in her mid-twenties, etc. And this is what I mean by not only are the Kardashians a perfect example of how far we can go with Facetune and how far we can go with live filters and Photoshop and making people believe that your filter self is your true self, but what the media can do to everyday people as well. You know, you don't just have to be a celebrity or public figure. You just have to see that people would have a strong opinion about how your body should be for it to affect you, you know? I'm not excusing the use of filters here, but part of me does wonder, seeing the extreme filter going on here where she clearly doesn't look like herself at all, I think she's oblivious to that. I truly don't think that she sees the vast difference here. And that's kind of worrying. Moving on to the more popular sister, I guess, or the more well-known Kim Kardashian. This is where I have a real problem with the use of beauty filters. And that's when people use them to sell their product, when it comes to cosmetics and beauty products. So my brother Robert actually did a reaction to this video and he noticed this. This is Kim Kardashian West selling her um, correct Conceal Bake and Brighten products. These are four steps to help cover up blue and purple under eyes and create a flawless makeup finish. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so straight away we can see skin filters are being used. And again, this is something you expect from the Kardashians, it just is. This is a little more professional than Facetune, but the smoothness of the skin and the lack of depth shows us that right away. This is probably Beauty Box, I believe it is, and that's a program that um, the E! Network that the Kardashians is on. Here in the UK, I don't know if it's everywhere, but they are known to use this on all their reality programs as well. Along with the clear filter, you can see that she already has makeup on. She's already covering up those dark circles that she's trying to sell you products to cover up when she's not showing them. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, you can see when you look at the eyes here, the texture of her eyes suddenly stops and blurs. There's no reason why that should happen. Obviously things like this depend on the camera. My face is in focus and you can see the texture of my skin. The background is a little bit more blurry. So you are gonna get that, but not when everything's on the same level. There's no reason why something should be in focus and then blur. Here again, you can clearly see the texture of the skin under the nose and then it just stops. It just, it just, it just stops. <laughs> so this can happen when you have lower quality video. So the camera I'm filming on now is decent. Sometimes my skin may blur in patches, but you'll see that blur move and that's joint with the video being compressed by YouTube. So part of the skins will look blurred, but when the camera is this close up to your skin and you can see pores, you can count the pores, there's no reason why the rest of the skin on that level should be blurred like that. So there is a more professional tool here because there's no glitching going on. As you can see when she's applying makeup under her eyes where there is that blur, there's no glitching, the tools just kind of blur a little bit too. So as I mentioned, this is where I have a problem because this is false advertising. She's already wearing makeup and using a filter for a product that claims to blur and correct under the eyes. The makeup and filter being used will do everything that the products is trying to sell claims to do. It will correct, they'll conceal, and they will brighten. Robert mentioned this in his video, and I completely agree that a better advert for products to conceal under the eyes would be to show your dark circles than show how well your product works at concealing under your eyes. I do not get adverts like this. It doesn't make sense to me. And I feel like this is why beauty gurus became such a huge thing on YouTube in the first place because they were removed from this false advertising, which was so prevalent. It's not so much the same nowadays, but this isn't something that's just limited to Kim Kardashian. You see this on skincare editorials. You see this in fashion editorials, you see it in makeup, perfect skin, advertising, acne medications. It just doesn't make sense. It's nothing new. Do I think it's right? Absolutely not. This is where using filters should be illegal or in the least 
mentioned disclaimed that you're using a filter it just doesn't make sense to me moving on we're moving on to the jenners now kylie jenner i was sent this picture a lot and i'm going to tell you why i don't take huge issue in this so this is from a collaboration video a still from a collaboration video that kylie jenner uh, did with james charles versus the thumbnail picture for that video so let's discuss obviously there is a filter here as i mentioned you just presume the Kardashian Jenners are gonna use a filter. They come filtered, you know? Also, James Charles speaks very, very openly about his use of filters. He also shows how he filters his um, pictures, which is something I respect and shows you how easy it is for an influencer to say, these pictures are filtered. A lot of his thumbnails are filtered like this as well. My personal opinion there is it doesn't bother me because you click onto that thumbnail and then you go straight into his video and you see the real him for the rest of the video. He doesn't use beauty filters from what I can see, which some beauty YouTubers do, but that's another video. So as I said, yes, there are filters here and it's very obvious, very obvious filters. But I also want to show you this picture of Kylie and this picture of Kylie. And this reminded me of something I wanted to talk about in this video. There is a huge difference between taking a natural photo of you laughing or you're caught in the moment versus posing for a picture. Let's take a thumbnail picture of me versus a screenshot from the same video. So the thumbnail picture usually takes about 20 different pictures. I've got a screen in front of me where I can see myself. I've got this little clicker thing where I can take my photo, start recording, all that kind of stuff. There's a difference to me between me talking like this in a video, talking to you smiling with my cheeks going everywhere, my head's probably a bit more relaxed and my chin's back to me. Then doing this, maybe like holding my chin in here, you know, sucking my chin a little bit. <laughs> and posing for a picture. There's a huge difference because all your muscles are relaxing in your face, you know, they're being put to work. And this is what makes a good model a good model is they know their angles. This is how supermodels become supermodels. I don't know if there's famous supermodels anymore, but then there's other factors in here like lighting that helps kind of like hide under the chin. You know, I'm not a fan of those Instagram accounts that kind of compare a picture of Kylie with no makeup on in joggers and a t-shirt getting into a car versus a filtered picture of her on the internet because yeah, it shows you the extreme differences, but there's also something in between there, you know, like why aren't you comparing a picture of her done up on the red carpet unedited to a picture of her done up on the red carpet that she's filtered herself? That would be a comparison thing to do, not her every day just being a normal person popping out for some milk. So yes, of course, filters have been used, but I'd be getting tagged a lot in people just using different angles. There are some great influencers out there that will show you before and after, or like posing versus not posing, and you can just see the huge difference that it makes. Again, of course, she's got a filter on. Her eyes are at a completely different angle. She's got a very strong jawline, and her makeup looks flawless, and there's obviously some color correction filters going on there. But yes, posing makes such a big difference. To compare a picture of someone just doing what they do every day and acting natural versus someone posing and being like, look how different they look. Of course they're gonna look different. Of course they're gonna look different. So that's all I'm gonna talk about today. Again, I think these are all things we need to consider when it comes to looking at advertising, what we're being sold when it comes to beauty and makeup and cosmetics, and just try and spot these little things that make such a big difference. Again, thank you so much for tagging me and adding me in all these pictures and videos. I really, really appreciate it. It obviously helps me make these videos, but that is it from me now. I will see you next time.